Hello everyone! Today we will be going over team room clearing and how to address threats in an incredibly dynamic situation. As always, I will be using the game Ready or Not to help demonstrate key tactics and overall setup. When conducting room clearing, there are three simple tenets that most police departments across the country ascribe to. Those being surprise, speed, and violence of action. The first two are pretty self-explanatory, but when we say violence of action, we mean the overall domination of any given situation. And as always, our priorities for threats are first people, then open doors, then closed doors. Address them in that order as the mission permits and you'll be doing swell. First things first though, we gotta go through the team setup. We have our point man, also known as the number one man in the stack, which is the person that will be addressing open thresholds and evaluating them for threats first. He'll be the person that is pieing open doors and taking the first step inside a room. The person who is the point man will change throughout the operation as after entry, the numbers will change. Next, we have our number two man. This person will have control over the stack. They will communicate decisions that are being made by the number one man to the rest of the group so everyone is aware of what is going on while being able to maintain security over the rest of the element. They will also be the person that prepares distraction devices, such as flashbangs or stingers, and throws them into rooms. Our number three man is pulling security with complete situational awareness. Our number four man is pulling security to the rear and in some situations will be the breacher if a door calls for it. If the four man is breaching, they will get the threshold open and then quickly move out of the way for the point man to conduct his sweep. So, here's the situation. We have a four man stack at an open door. The number one man sets up against the wall and readies to make entry. The number two man sees he is ready and lets the stack know they are about to start the threshold evaluation and entry. He does this by giving some physical or verbal communication, such as tapping the three man's leg, which the three man will pass on to the four man. This train of communication is important, and if you fail to maintain said communication, someone is going to get left behind. After the confirmation is given, the number one man will start to pie the door. If you want more information on pieing doors and so on, check out my last video on single man room clearing. After the one man pies the door and addresses any threats he can see, he will make a decision on going left or right into the room, because it is a center fed room in this case. If the one man decides to go left, the two man will go right, then the three man will go left and so on until you fill the room or area. We are creating what is known as a strong wall, allowing for all sectors of fire to be covered while staying online with one another. Always remember the one man is always right. Even if you think the one man is taking a bad route, just go the opposite way and in general, the configuration will work out. Another quick point here. If you're the one man making entry, don't geek out your two man by looking in one direction when entering the room and then turning to go the total opposite way right after. This will confuse the two man and will cause a jam in the fatal funnel. You can also use a split stack method, which follows the same principles, but the number two man is always the person next to the door handle, allowing for the number one man to focus on clearing. Let's do a corner fed room now. Corner fed rooms are a little bit more interesting as you can strong wall them, but in my personal opinion, I like to alternate them just like center fed rooms. Again, same scenario. Two man gets everyone on the same page, one man does his job and his threshold evaluation, gives the signal and makes entry. When the one man makes entry, he will choose to go to the known or unknown side of the room. There is a huge debate on which one is right, but ultimately, as we said before, no matter what, you need to be quick when entering that room. After the one man enters whichever side he took, the two man will take the opposite side. When filling in rooms, ensure that you're staying at least two to three feet away from the wall, if possible, so that your roommates can pass behind you if they need to. This prevents you from flagging a teammate running in front of you and also eliminates possible friendly fire. To reiterate, speed is important for entry. If you're the two man, you need to be, as all the instructors like to say it, not to butt with the guy in front of you. This is to ensure that you have as many guns in the fight as possible and allows for the number one man to run the rabbit. Running the rabbit simply means to have the one man enter as quickly as possible after the threshold valuation, attracting the focus of anyone in the room towards him, allowing for the two, three, and four man to be free to engage targets with less attention drawn towards them. Now let's cover some more dynamic scenarios often seen in buildings. Stairways. Oh boy, stairways. As I said before in the last video, stairways are considered fatal funnels, and you need to get out of them as soon as humanly possible. 
When ascending or descending, the number one man faces forward and covers the front. The number two man covers the top or bottom set of stairs the team is ascending or descending to. The number three man will cover the second row of stairs and then the number four man will be covering the rear. Let's address fatal funnels now, since we mentioned them with stairways. As I said before in the last video, fatal funnels are incredibly dangerous and you need to get out of them as soon as possible. You still have to have situational awareness and get through them safely, but you need to get out of them quickly. Fatal funnels are areas in which there is an increased risk of being shot. Think of it this way, if a person with a gun is standing at the end of a hallway, they don't really need to be incredibly accurate to try and hit you. You have nowhere to go and are pretty much being funneled, keyword there, into the line of fire. Stairways, hallways, doorways, and pretty much anywhere there is no place to bail out of a gunfight are considered fatal funnels. To briefly cover through getting hallways, there are a multitude of different formations you can take. One that I prefer is the diamond formation. The diamond formation is done by having the team stand in a diamond pattern. Now, most of the time, you'll be doing a thorough search of an area, stopping at each opening or closed door, and doing your normal room clearing. However, if you are in an active shooter situation, you may need to have your side coverage do a hasty threshold evaluation and continue down the hallway toward active gunfire or screaming. Should one of the sides get contact in an active shooter scenario, the other teammates will need to turn and address the threat. Let's say you took contact from the front. The right and left side of the diamond formation would break away from their coverage and get online with the front man to put as many guns in the fight as possible, and the man to the rear will continue to cover the rear. If the right side of the formation were to receive contact, then the front man would break, turn to the right, and address the threat. And the rear man would break his coverage, turn to the left, and engage the threat as well. What about an open door in a hallway? For this scenario, you can split the element in two. You keep the number one and two man together with your one man pieing the door and your two man providing rear security down the hallway. The three man stays at the threshold and waits for the one man to conduct his threshold evaluation and the four-man provides rear security for the three-man. Once the one-man decides to enter, alternate people entering left-right, left-right, as per usual. The four-man will stay just in the door facing out into the hallway to provide rear security. If the element takes contact, the four-man will break away from rear security and join the fight. This method can be done on corner fed rooms as well. Next up is a T-intersection. While walking up to the T-intersection, you will have two of your teammates advance in front of you and take the left and right side of the wall. The teammate on the left side of the wall will be addressing any threats on the right side of the hallway, and the right side will do the same for the left side of the hallway. After the left and right man have cleared as much of the hallway as possible without actually exposing themselves to the hallway, they will flip or enter the hallway their partner was just addressing. T intersections can be at two open doorways as well. And I know what you're thinking here, why not just have the left man take the left side and the right man take the right side? The reason we do it this way is so that you can see your partner and can have constant communication with them. This also prevents one team member from taking the hallway too quickly, leaving their other teammates exposed to fire. I know I've thrown a lot at y'all in this video, so if you feel like you're trying to drink from a fire hose, that's absolutely expected at this point. Work through some scenarios of your own and do some room clearing drills in your house. Try and get some good muscle memory so that when the time calls for it, you don't even have to think about it. Having the skill and know-how to clear out areas, especially in an urban environment, could just save you or another person's life someday. Just as the Border Patrol agent did last month, who ensured the safety of the surviving students at the Uvalde school by putting down the animal that entered the school that day. A heartbreaking tragedy, one that has done irrevocable damage on those subjected to some low-life scum's evil nature. We pray for healing of those hurt directly or indirectly and for the families and friends who lost a loved one that day. And always remember our sole objectives. Stop the killing. Stop the dying. I'll see y'all later.